Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And on the line with us, Medea Benjamin, the co-founder of Code Pink and, and uh, GlobalExchange.org, CodePink.org, and uh, perhaps most, uh, and, and just, you know, activist and, and uh, brilliant American patriot extraordinaire. Uh, but uh, also I want to emphasize her new book, Kingdom of the Unjust, Behind the U.S.-Saudi Connection, is a book that if you want to understand that part of the world, and frankly, it, it is affecting the entire planet, you have to read this book. Uh, Medea, welcome to the program, or welcome back. Thanks for having me on, Tom. It's great to have you with us. I was uh, reading a couple of in-depth pieces on the whole uh, situation with uh, Myanmar and uh, Rohingya, um, uh, and cor correct me if I'm mispronouncing it, please, um, that that basically, uh, well, actually, rather than trying to characterize what may be a partial understanding on my part, um, you're here. Let me toss it to you. Who are the Rohingya? Why is it that, that Myanmar, the former Burma, is, is, is expelling them and murdering them and burning their villages and killing their people? And, and you know, now we've got the, the refugees, horrible refugee situation. What are the depth, depths or dimensions of that uh, situation? Well, the Rohingya have lived um, for centuries, actually, in this area, uh, but they are not recognized by the present government of Myanmar. In fact, the state's official stance is that the Rohingya ethnic group doesn't exist. Uh, instead, they're referred to as uh, Bengali, uh, which is trying to link them to a foreign land that they have never stepped foot in. Uh, despite the fact that they do share cultural similarities. But uh, Burma doesn't recognize the Rohingya as citizens, which keeps them stateless and uh, limits their access to public services, discriminates against them. There have been periods of attacks on them uh, over the years, but the most uh, uh, brutal one came at most recently in uh, August after um, a... Uh, an armed Rohingya group attacked a number of the uh, outposts of the police, and um, the military has uh, responded with terrible brutality. Yeah. And they are Muslim. What, what, how does that play into this? Well, they are Muslim, and this is a, a majority Buddhist country, and uh, I think the general... Uh, impression of Buddhists around the world is that they are this very peace-loving people. In fact, I love the signs at some of the protests I've been to saying, what would Buddha do? Um, because uh, certainly this uh, brutality of the government has changed the face of, uh, of Buddhism. And it's also changed the face of what people thought of uh, the Nobel Peace Laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, who was uh, for so long in uh, detention and a fighter for human rights, and uh, the world looked towards her as somebody who would move the country into uh, a democracy and have been so uh, upset at the way that she has been silent until actually it was just today that she finally spoke out on this issue, uh, but not in any way that really places the blame where it belongs, which is on the, uh, the, the military. Uh, the day before yesterday when I was in Germany, I read a, a, a fairly long analysis piece on this in one of the German newspapers that, that basically put forward the following um, narrative, that the Rohingya had been, as you, as you point out, an oppressed minority uh, and, and uh, you know, suffered very badly for years and years, um, but they're also Muslim, and that into their particular, what used to be a relatively benign form of Islam, um, has over the last couple of decades come a number of uh, evangelists from the, uh, shall we call it, Saudi version or Wahhabist version of, or, or more hard, hard line, whatever, you know, you would know the right phrase, and I'll, I'll wait for you to tell me, um, of Islam. And that created uh, a small faction among the Rohingya, sort of like the uh, the Weathermen were a small faction of the SDS back in the day, and and that small faction has adopted violence, and and they have they have uh, you know bombed police stations and attacked uh, the government and whatnot, and so what the government is doing right now in Burma 
and again, this is this is like not even one percent of the Rohingya, but it's some of the some of these these fanatics who think that if they if they can do this, they go to heaven immediately, and the whole seventy two virgins routine. And and the consequence of that is that the government has responded by simply saying, okay, let's kill them all. You know, we can't we can't uh, help. You know, we're not going to get rid of these people. We're not willing to provide the kind of social services and citizenship and respect that that a people really need to feel integrated into a society. So and they're feeling alienated, and we're not willing to do the work to do that. So we're just going to basically expel them. It's sort of like Donald Trump trying to expel all the Muslims from the United. Well, actually, it's not. That's a that's a terrible that's a terrible metaphor, but but that that really was the cause of the whole thing. That that's where it began. Was was uh, you know some of these, and now it's just and and so now they're feeding each other. Now as the people are being murdered and tortured, the, many of the people are now starting to join the 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 the, the right wing crazies and fighting back. But they're being slaughtered, et cetera. Is that a, a reasonably accurate analysis? Well, except I think that we have to understand that there have been repeated waves of violence against the Rohingya since the late 1970s, and that, uh, as unfortunately happens in so many places around the world, when people's legitimate grievances are not addressed, uh, there are certain people within that group that will turn to violence. Um, for uh, some people, they are called terrorists. For others, they are seen as freedom fighters. Um, but uh, as you are saying, Tom, it's the majority of nonviolent, peaceful uh, families that have been attacked. Um, there are about 1.1 million Rohingya that remained in, in Burma, and now we have about 420,000 of them having fled to Bangladesh just in the last month. So the level of the crisis is horrendous with the food being scarce, uh, aid agencies don't have the aid they need, um, the government I would say that Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, with the statement that she made today, uh, had some real falsehoods within that, saying, for example, that the country is open for human rights uh, people and humanitarian workers to come in and journalists. Uh, but that is indeed not the case. And in fact, uh, journalists can only come in with government minders and are not allowed to go to the villages that have been burned and, and uh, talk to the people who are fleeing. Uh, they, if they do it, they are doing it on the, the sly. So um, the government has tried to keep people from coming in to tell the truth, although on the positive side, I would say the truth has been getting out, particularly by talking to these terrorized uh, refugees who have been flooding into Bangladesh. Right. Is there, is there any truth to the implication of this article I read that had Saudi Arabia not been exporting Wahhabism for 100 years, there may still be violence, you know, sort of like, you know, the U.S. rising up against George III, you know, feeling, the Rohingya feeling like they've been screwed by the government or treated badly by the government, they're going to fight back. But it wouldn't have taken this particular form. Or is that um, kind of a side issue that maybe that newspaper was grinding their anti-Muslim acts? We just have a half a, half a minute here, uh, Medea. No, I think that's true. The Saudis and Pakistanis have been sending money to the Rohingya uh, to build up this army. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be quite small, about 1,500 fighters, uh, but they have been quite effective and have brought this terrible uh, response from the military. So, yes, I would say there is truth to that. Amazing. So our evangelical militarism around the world and the Saudis, uh, what a mess. And you are the expert on it, and your book is so good, Kingdom of the Unjust. I, I, I please people, read this book. It's extraordinary. Medea Benjamin, thank you, and CodePink.org. Thank you, Medea.